Hello, this is James Hudnall, and welcome to episode 21 of Creative Secrets. This one is about resolution, also known as denouement. It is the ending of a story. All the hard work is done in the story. This is just tidying up at the end. You would think this would be very easy to understand, but you'd be surprised how many people screw it up. So I want to give you an idea of what to do and what not to do so you can avoid the trap that so many other creative people have made in the past that I've seen. Uh, They've seen a movie where the hero beats the villain and then it just ends and nothing else happens and we never find out where it goes or what happens to the characters or anything. That's one kind of quote-unquote denouement that's not very satisfying. Ultimately, you want to satisfy the reader. You don't want to bore them and you don't want to make them feel like that's all it was. You know, you want them to feel there was something there. The denouement, the resolution, is a period of time that's very short, and it's the shortest part of your story, but it just tidies up all the loose ends. All the questions raised in the story should be answered by the time you get here. It should be answered earlier in the story, but any dangling threads should be tidied up if possible. Now, there's exceptions to this rule, of course. If you have a plan to continue the story in another chapter, in another episode, another book or movie, then you could make the questions raised sort of like something to kind of tease you for the next book or the next movie. But if it's um, just uh, something that you decide you never want to answer, if you want to make it a sort of like a question from the author to the audience for them to ponder on, something to make them think, then that's one good thing you can do. The last thing you want is unfinished plot threads that you had never intended to answer because you didn't know the answer yourself, like certain TV shows I can name. That's not a good idea because people don't like that. They feel frustrated by that. You ultimately want people to feel they got their money's worth when they put their money down for your product, and you don't want to insult them and make them feel like they were used or they were just part of a big come on marketing strategy and had nothing to do with the story. We've discussed in the act structure how your story kind of shows you a character going through various states in the action from positive to negative so they can go to highs and lows. Ultimately the ending is something that is decided by you. Is it going to be a happy ending? Is it going to be a a bad ending, or is it going to be an ironic ending, where it's a little of both? That's something that, again, you have to think about also. So the denouement is sort of like the final note of your performance, and it's up to you to decide how you want that note to be. So the happy ending usually has some kind of positive thing being shown, like people hugging or walking away hand in hand or something upbeat. And then a sad ending is, of course, sad in some way. Whereas an ironic ending is sort of like visually, usually this is how it's done. You have some kind of some two, uh, both things happening where a good example would be the graduate where he successfully gets the girl and steals away from the guy at her wedding and they run off together and they're on a bus together riding off but then you kind of look at them and the expression on their face suggests that maybe they made a bad decision they're not sure that's an ironic ending that kind of leaves it up in the air as to whether there's a positive or negative future for this couple so that's something you can do also Uh, There's another good example is a movie I love called The Long Good Friday, uh, in which it's a bad ending, but at the same time, all it is is the camera looks at the character as he's being driven away. I won't spoil the situation, but the expression on his face shows him going through all kinds of emotional ranges. He's sort of like thinking back on everything over his whole life and everything leading up to this point. And it's sort of like the revelation for him, where he suddenly sees it all. He finally gets a joke, but it's too late. That is a brilliant kind of ending that's negative, but it also has an ironic quality to it. So those are things you can do that makes it interesting. You want the story ending to be satisfying, whether it's positive or negative or ironic. You want it to feel like it was a good way to wrap it up. It's like a song that has very cool kind of end notes. The boring songs, and this was common in my day, in the 70s and 80s especially, uh, where they would have a song just fade out. 
you know, fade outs in a song. It's just kind of like an easy way to go. But the songs that have like a clever ending, those are the ones that I always were impressed by. The same thing goes for a movie or a story. If it has an ending that sort of said something, that's sort of like a final statement on the story, that's something that you can do that would be interesting and makes your story special. So that's it for today. Uh, this is going to wrap up this the three-act structure series of videos. We'll be doing more act structure stuff later especially technique-oriented stuff, but I want to get into characterization next. So we're going to start developing characters and talk about different types of characters in the next set of videos, which will all be part of Creative Secrets. So thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't done so. Check the links in the description below, and I will see you later. Bye.